This is an analysis of Catherine Mansfield's short story, The Garden Party. Summary of The Garden Party As the title suggests, The Garden Party centers on the annual garden party held by the Sheridan family at their home in New Zealand, the country where Mansfield had been born in 1888, though she later moved to England. The Sheridans are upper middle class as suggested by the very idea of the garden party itself. One of the Sheridan children, Laura, a young woman on the cusp of adulthood, is looking forward to the party and is keen to become involved in the preparations. However, while the Sheridans are preparing for their party, news arrives that a working-class man who lives in the poorer part of the village has been tragically killed when his horse reared up and threw him from his cart. Laura, filled with sympathy for the dead man and his family, pleads with her mother and siblings to cancel their garden party in light of the tragedy. How can they hold a garden party with music and guests and laughter when a family nearby are in mourning for the death of their husband and father? Laura finds that the rest of her family are not so sympathetic. They assume the man was drunk, revealing their class prejudice, and that the type of person that, that type of person doesn't expect sacrifices from the likes of them. Laura gives up trying to persuade her family to cancel the party and retires to her bedroom to get ready before the guests arrive. Here she catches sight of herself in a mirror, all dressed up and wearing an elegant and fashionable black hat with a decorative gold pin, and decides that maybe, maybe her mother was right and it would be silly and wrong to cancel the party. She decides to go ahead and attend the party and return to thinking about the recent tragedy afterwards. The garden party itself is treated in the space of a few short paragraphs. After the guests have left, Mrs. Sheridan, Laura's mother, suggests that her daughter take the leftover food from the party round to the family of the man who died. Laura does so and finds the poor family in mourning and the dead man laid out in one of the rooms. She is encouraged to go in and see him, and when she does, she is overwhelmed with an odd feeling, not of sadness or of despair, but of happiness, joy, release, and contentment. She leaves the house, finding that her brother Lori has come to look for her. As they walk back home together, Laura tries to put into words how she feels. Her experience at the house of the dead man was marvelous. She cries, but whether they are tears of joy or sadness remains unstated. The story ends with Laura trying to convey to her brother how she feels about life, but finds she cannot think of the words. Postmodernism World War I had a profound impact on the belief of nihilism, or the belief in nothing. Unlike the Victorians, the modernists had lost their standing as a world superpower, and World War I was devastating in the death and meaningless destruction of, that people witnessed through trench warfare. After World War II, the British experienced more economic and political stability, which allowed them to see diversity and the breakdown in traditional Christian values as less of a threat than right after World War I. They felt more optimistic and embraced diversity of beliefs more than after World War I. Modernists wrote before World War II, they mourned the loss of unified beliefs and are disturbed and feel there is no meaning in life in the modern world. They feel alienated and try to find meaning. Postmodernists wrote after World War II. They celebrate diversity and pluralism and don't fear but accept complexity in life and a diversity of beliefs and values. They don't attempt to find any one meaning or truth. They pose questions about without answers and accept diversity. The Garden Party is postmodern in having no clear answers or interpretation or suggestion of what is right or how things should be. Laura seems to instinctually know her mother's prejudice against lower classes is wrong and that it is wrong to have a party and just bring leftover food to the poor, poorer neighbors so soon after the father of five has just recently died. Her questioning the morality of this action shows hope that she will not be as cold and uncaring as her mother. Mansfield's writing is realistic in that it shows the problems of the middle class. The garden party is critical of class distinction with the mother's insensitivity towards the neighbor's grief, and yet the main character decided 
to enjoy the party and put off thinking about the neighbors until after the party. Therefore, it isn't clear if the daughter will become like the mother or not, though it suggests that she might be more sensitive to, to those who are less fortunate than her mother is. Rite of Passage in the garden party, the protagonist, Laura, matures into adulthood. She realizes there is more to life than her own narrow experience. It is summertime to parallel her young life. She has not matured into the fall or winter of her life. Their last name, Sheridan, is the name of an Irish playwright who was known for his comedies of manners. This is ironic because in the garden party, the Sheridan family is more concerned with manners than actually caring for others. Laura has an internal struggle between caring for and being compassionate towards her neighbors who have just lost their father and having fun at the frivolous garden party at her home. She questions the separation of classes when she views the corpse of the cart driver who has recently died and appears at peace in death, perhaps because he is in heaven, she, recognized their share, she recognizes their shared humanity. She apologizes for her fancy hat because it seems out of place in their home where they are mourning. At the end of the story, she can't finish her thought when she says, Isn't life as if she can't verbalize the inequalities and unfairness in life? And her brother finishes it, finishes her thought with, Isn't it darling? This ending is ambiguous and postmodern in that it merely suggests possible interpretations. It is not clear if he's calling life darling or calling his sister darling. But either way, he doesn't seem to understand what she has noticed about the separation of the social classes and his family's insensitivity towards those of another social class. Images of Lightness and Darkness The images of lightness surrounding the Sheridan home contrast with the images of darkness surrounding the poorer neighbors' homes. When she descends the hill to bring the neighbors' leftover food from their party, she enters another world. Their world is dark and dreary and filled with poverty. The father's death will mean even more hardship and difficulty for his large family. She describes the other side of the road in which she enters the lives of another social class. They were the greatest possible eyesore, and they had no right to be in that neighborhood at all. They were little mean dwellings painted a chocolate brown. In the garden patches there was nothing but cabbage stalks, sick hens, and tomato cans. The very smoke coming out of their chimneys was poverty-stricken. Little rags and shreds of smoke, so unlike the great silverly, silvery plumes that uncurled from the Sheridan's chimneys. Washerwomen lived in the lane and sw sweeps a cobbler and a man whose house front was studded all over with minute bird cages. Children swarmed. When the Sheridans were little, they were forbidden to set foot there because of the revolting language and of what they might catch, but since they were grown up, Laura and Lori on their prowl sometimes walked through. It was a disgust it was disgusting and sordid. They came out with a shudder, but still one must go everywhere, one must see everything, so through they went. The description is in sharp contrast with the Sheridan's extravagant home, and the fact that the mother forbids her as a child to go anywhere near the neighbors reveals her parents' prejudice and social snobbery. Symbolism of the Lilies The lilies are associated with innocence and beauty, which is what Laura is. The ending is hopeful in that Laura is willing to enter the world of the neighbors alone, showing that perhaps she will not inherit her mother's prejudices toward the lower social class. Marxist Analysis Marxist analysis looks at how the social classes are portrayed. In the garden party, the upper middle class or bourgeoisie class is portrayed as very unsympathetic in this story. And the proletariat or laboring class is portrayed as suppressed by the bourgeoisie.